the UCF College of Medicine researchers concentrate in four key areas. We begin our look at these researchers with Henry Daniel, who may have a breakthrough in the treatment of juvenile diabetes. Much of his work at UCF has involved genetically altering tobacco plants to produce vaccines for anthrax and other diseases. Well, taking that a step further, he has found a way to produce human insulin in genetically modified lettuce. Preliminary results on tests in diabetic mice show more than just a control for diabetes. This stimulates natural production of insulin after six to eight weeks of treatment. They no longer need injection of insulin, but they start producing insulin naturally. In other words, a potential cure, not just a treatment. Other research deals with less well-known but potentially more devastating illnesses. Christina Fernandez Valle is focusing on a rare disorder that impacts about one in every 25,000 people, often in their teen years. Neurofibromatosis type 2, NF2 for short, leads to tumors along nerves, often on the acoustic nerve. The tumor can lead to loss of hearing and balance. Removing them could lead to complete deafness and paralysis of facial muscles. For now, surgery is the only treatment. So my goal is to identify proteins that can act as targets for new drug development so that we can effectively treat the schwannomas and prevent them from growing large enough to damage hearing in patients with NF2. In another lab, Annette Khalid and her co-workers are looking at a drug that the National Cancer Institute has identified as one of the top five drugs for treating cancer. Called interleukin-7, it is known to sometimes stimulate the body's own immune cells in the blood to fight cancer. Unfortunately, different kinds of immune cells respond to the IL-7 in different ways. But Khalid's work has begun to unravel this complex story. So it's really important the dose of IL-7. So if you were to use, for example, IL-7 therapeutically, for example, a person who has cancer, we can give them some IL-7, maybe inject it in some site in the body, and stimulate the cells to kill the cancer. Well, if we give them too much IL-7, we'll get the killer cells activated, but we may not get the helper cells that the killer cells need. Two medical topics have been making headlines recently. The role of oxidants in aging, and the increasing risk of infections in hospital patients. Researcher William Self is addressing both. He is studying how tiny nanoparticles of cerium oxide can act as an antioxidant. The particles actually scavenge superoxide, a form of oxygen that can damage DNA and cells in the body. Many different diseases, including cardiovascular diseases, um, include inflammation and part of the Part of the, the mechanism of inflammation is the production of reactive oxygen species. So we, um, we're looking more in terms of how they might be uh, anti-inflammatory through their radical scavenging properties. Uh, this is sort of where we're going to going now. Self is also finding ways to control infections from drug-resistant bacteria that can strike patients in hospitals and long-term care facilities. He has found the bacteria need the chemical selenium for growth. If we can block the use of selenium, it, it may provide um, a novel class of, of antibiotics against bacteria that require selenium. James Turkson is also doing basic research on how cancer cells grow. Cancer cells are often normal cells gone bad. Something snaps and the internal chemical signals that keep the cells operating properly are corrupted. The cells grow uncontrollably. They even migrate to form tumors in other parts of the body. Turkson is looking at how three specific proteins become corrupted and start sending out signals that support cancer growth and how to stop them. We're focusing on both how they go, they go on haywire and in an attempt to understand that particular, those particular events. And then we will use that understanding to now derive new modalities that could disrupt the haywire signal in cancer cells and therefore come up with new therapies. 
These are just a few examples of the successful research already underway through the UCF College of Medicine. All the faculty members have been funded from the most nationally competitive agency, the National Institutes of Health. And m many of them, or most of them, have multiple grants. And that is amazing in a time when, in the history of this nation, this is the most super competitive period. And our faculty members competing with the best in the country are getting their share 